Hi, this is Crystal from Christico Design, and today we are making the Sarah cardigan. We are using a 5mm hook and DK or number 3 weight yarn. Here I'm using this gloss from We Crochet in the color Cranberry. The amount of yarn you'll need by size is for extra small, you'll need 9 balls or 1,000 yards, small, 10 balls or 1,225 yards, medium 11 balls or 1,300 yards, large 12 balls or 1,450 yards, extra large 13 balls or 1,600 yards, 2x 14 balls or 1,700 yards, 3x 15 balls or 1,800 yards, 4x 16 balls or 1,950 yards, 5x 17 balls or 2,091 yards. Remember if you adjust or lengthen your cardigan to order an extra ball of yarn. You want to begin with your yarn and your hook by working a gauge swatch. Make a 4 by 4 inch square of double crochets and measure comparing it to the pattern gauge which is 13 double crochets in 4 inches and eight rows of double crochet in four inches. These numbers are after blocking. If you need help on checking gauge or blocking, I'll add those links in the description. To make this cardigan, we are gonna crochet it in three pieces. The main body is crocheted in one piece from the bottom up, and then we will divide the front two panels from the back panel. So we have a place for our armholes and our sleeves. Then we'll seam those together at the shoulders. So when we start, our starting chain is going to be able to fit all the way around the body, which is a pretty good quick check after you've worked a few rows to make sure you're on point with your chosen size. And after we have um, crocheted the body, then we will go into working the sleeves, which are cro crocheted separately in the round, and then we will seam them on at the armholes. The suggested ease for this pattern is two to four inches for a classic normal fit. If you would like a looser fit, you can go up or down, up a size or two. For a snugger, more fitted sweater, you can go down a size. If you would like to customize your sweater further, you will need a stitch multiple of two plus six. And Adjustments like length are easy to make by adding or subtracting rows. So you want to do that before we divide for the armholes when we divide it into the front and back panels. So um, to check that number you can measure from your underneath your arm about where a typical shirt or sweater normally hits down to where you want your sweater to stop and that will let you know how long you need that piece to be. The extra small is intended to fit a size of 30 inches, small 34 inches, medium 38 inches, large 42 inches, extra large 46 inches, 2x 50 inches, 3x 54 inches, 4x 58 inches, and 5x 62 inches. The pattern adds two to four inches to the bust measurement for a finished bust of 32 inches for extra small, 37 inches for small, 41.75 inches for medium, 44.5 inches for large, 49.25 inches for extra large, 54 inches for 2x, 56.75 for 3x, 61.5 for 4x, and 64 inches for 5x. These numbers are also available in the written pattern, which you can find free on my blog, christicodesign.com, under Sarah Cardigan. You can also purchase the PDF pattern from one of my shops, which includes all of these things we've gone over, plus more, like a chart with additional measurements and the schematic. So I'd love for you to check those out. I will add the links in the description, both to my blog and to my shops. Okay, once you have met gauge with your yarn and hook and you have chosen your size, we are ready to get started. Row one, 
foundation double crochet for extra small, 104, 120 for small, 136, medium, 144, large, 160, extra large, 176, 2x, 184, 3x, 200, 4x, 208, 5x. Or if you're unfamiliar with foundation double crochet, you can chain 106 for extra small, 122 small, 138 medium, 146 large, 162 extra large, 178 2x, 186 3x, 202 4x, 210 5x. Then double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook and in each chain across and turn your work. Here I am just demonstrating a very small swatch of foundation double crochet for you. For row two, we will chain three, which will count as the first double crochet. Here I use the chain three alternative, and I can link that tutorial up for you in the description as well. Then, in each stitch across, we'll double crochet and turn. For row three, we will do a repeat of row two. Now you can do a quick test of your finished bust and make sure your three rows of double crochets are fitting around your body how you like. Better to check now than make your whole sweater. Again, your finished measurements are blocked after blocking, so most yarns relax a little bit in the blocking process, but if you blocked your gauge swatch and it didn't change much, then you should know that your sweater won't change much either. Okay, we are ready to start on our stitch pattern. We're on row four, and we are going to start with our chain three. Then we're going to place a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. We'll start every row for the back panel with these three. Next, we're going to skip one stitch and we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then we're going back into the same stitch to place a second double crochet. And that is going to be a repeat across our row until we have three stitches left. So skip one, place two double crochets in the next stitch and keep repeating that across until you only have three stitches left. When you only have three stitches left, you'll place one double crochet in each of those three stitches. So our first one is right next to our two double crochets there. Okay, turn your work and for row five and on through rows 31, you will repeat row four. So chain three, double crochet in the next two stitches. Then your repeat begins, skip one stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch. Repeat that across until you have three stitches left. Double crochet in those last three stitches and turn. When we begin our stitch pattern of skipping one and placing two, we'll always be working in the second double crochet. Your stitch count will not change. Extra small has 104 stitches. Small 120, medium 136, large 144, extra large 160, 2x 176, 3x 184, 4x 200, and 5x 208 stitches. As written, the sweater pattern 
length is 21 and a half inches for extra small, 22.5 inches small, 23 inches medium, 23.5 inches large, extra large 23.5 inches, 2x and 3x 24.5 inches, 4 and 5x 25.5 inches. If you think you want a longer cardigan, you want to do it at this part. We're on the back panel now, which is actually the front, back, and other front all in one. When we divide, you won't be able to add length anywhere except for at the shoulders, which may not be where you want to add it. Okay, once you have 31 rows, you are ready to divide. Unless you would like to add more length, do that now. We will only be adding for extra small six inches, small seven inches, medium seven and a half inches, large eight inches, extra large eight inches, two x and three x nine inches, four and five x ten inches from here on out. So if that is not enough length for you, go ahead and add more rows now. Be sure to end on an odd row. We end in the pattern on row 31. So if you're going to add rows, add two rows so that you end on row 33 and that will keep your stitch pattern looking the same once we divide. Before you divide, be sure to check your stitch count. It has not changed. The stitch count should be the same. We're going to divide the front right when wearing, back and left front when you're wearing the sweater. Place the stitch marker in the 27th for extra small, 31st for small, 35th medium, 37th large, 39th extra large, 45th 2x, 47th 3x, 51st 4x, and 53rd stitch for 5x. The marker will go in the second double crochet of a set. The first 26 for extra small, 30 small, 34 medium, 36 large, 40 extra large, 44 2x, 46 3x, 50 4x, and 52 stitches, 5x are the front right panel. The first stitch marker begins the back panel. You'll begin with the marked stitch, the one we just put the stitch marker in, and count 52 extra small, 60 small, 68 medium, 72 large, 80 extra large, 88 2x, 92 3x, 104 x, and 104 stitches, 5x, and place the second stitch marker in that last stitch we counted. So the marker will be in the first double crochet of a set for this one. This marks the end of the back panel. The remaining 26 extra small, 30 small, 34 medium, 36 large, 40 extra large, 44 2x, 46 3x, 54 x, and 52 5x stitches are the front left panel when you're wearing it. Please make sure the marked stitches are a part of the back panel stitch count, meaning you will work into those when we work the back panel. They are part of the back panel stitch count. Okay, we'll begin with the front right panel when wearing. If you are a left-handed crocheter, the right panel is your left panel and vice versa. The row count will start over. So this is row one we'll start with, and row one will be on the right side. Chain three and then double crochet in the next two stitches. Just going to take a minute here to mark the first stitch of my front panel that I'm working with here so I know where I'm starting. Okay, after our first three stitches we're going to begin our stitch pattern. Skip one, place two double crochets in the next. And just like our back panel, we will repeat that all the way across, but only for our marked off front panel stitches. So we will stop one stitch before the stitch marker. 
you will continue to place your two double crochets in the second double crochet of the set. When you have one stitch before the stitch marker, double crochet in that stitch and turn. Extra small has 26 stitches, small 30, medium 34, large 36, extra large 40, 2x44, 3x46, 4x50, and 5x52 stitches. Now we're on row 2 of the right front panel. We're going to start with our chain 3, then begin our stitch pattern. Skip the next stitch, place two double crochets in the following stitch, and repeat that until we have three stitches left. When we have three stitches left, we'll place one double crochet in each of those three stitches and turn. On row three of our front panel, we start with a chain three and then double crochet in the next two stitches. Then we begin our stitch pattern, skip the next stitch, place two double crochets in the next stitch, and repeat that until we have one stitch left. Then we'll double crochet in that last stitch and turn. We're at the end of our row three, we have one stitch left where we're going to place one double crochet, and then turn and carry on to row four. Okay, for row four, we are going to start a decrease here. We start with our chain three, and then we're going to skip the next stitch, place two double crochets in the following stitch. We'll keep repeating the stitch pattern across, skip one and place two, until we have seven stitches left in the row. Okay, when you have seven stitches left, skip the next stitch, place only one double crochet in the following, and then do that again. Skip the next stitch and place one double crochet in the following. Then we'll place one double crochet in each of the last three stitches. This is how we'll decrease our stitches but maintaining our stitch pattern and stitch count we need by only placing one double crochet in those stitches instead of two to create the V in our neckline. After row four, you will have two less stitches. Extra small has 24, small 28, medium 32, large 34, extra large 38, 2x42, 3x44, 4x48, 5x50 stitches. Okay, for row five, we are doing a chain three and then one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Then we will skip the next stitch and place two double crochets in the following. These are our single double crochets from our decrease before. Then we will keep repeating our stitch pattern across, skip one and place two. Okay, as we get to the end of row five here, we are going to place one double crochet in the last stitch and then turn our work. Our stitch count will remain the same for row five. Okay, for all sizes now, for rows six through 11, you will do repeats of rows four and five. I'm going to demonstrate row four and five again for you now. Row four starts with a chain three, then begin the stitch pattern of skip one stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch, and repeat that across until you have seven stitches left. Then you will skip one stitch, place only one double crochet in the next, and then repeat that again. Skip one, place only one double crochet in the next, and then you will have three stitches left in the row, 
you will place one double crochet in each of those three stitches. And row four will decrease your stitch count by two more stitches. And you do a repeat of row five, which starts with a chain three, double crochet in the next two stitches. Skip the next stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch, and keep repeating that until you only have one stitch left. Place a double crochet in the last stitch and turn. Your row five stitch count will stay the same as your row four. Repeat rows four and five until you have made 11 rows of just the front panel. So where I marked the row with the red stitch marker would be where I start my stitch count. Your ending stitches at the end of row 11 will be 18 for extra small, 22 small, 26 medium, 28 large, 32 extra large, 36 2x, 38 3x, 42 4x, 44 5x. To finish this shoulder, each size will need to repeat rows 2 and 3, and I'm going to demonstrate those again for you in a moment, but first I'm going to tell you how many rows for each size. Extra small will make one more row, a repeat of row 2. Small will repeat rows 2 and 3, just one time each, and then do one more repeat of row 2. For medium, repeat rows 2 and 3 until you have 15 rows total. For large, repeat rows 2 and 3 until you have 15 rows total, and then do one more row of row 2 repeat. Extra large also will repeat rows 2 and 3 until you have 15 rows, and then do a row 2 repeat, so you'll have 16 rows. Sizes 2 and 3x will repeat rows 2 and 3 until you have 17 rows, and then do one more row 2 repeat for an 18th row. row. Sizes 4 and 5x will repeat rows 2 and 3 through 19 rows, and then do a row 2 repeat for row 20. To finish out the shoulder, we'll be repeating rows 2 and 3. Row two is a chain three, skip the next stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch. And repeat that until you have three stitches left. Place one double crochet in each of those three stitches. Row three is a chain three. Double crochet in the next two stitches. Skip the next stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch. And repeat that until you have one stitch left. Double crochet in the last stitch and turn. Okay, just keep repeating rows two and three for your size or to your comfort level there, and then we'll be ready to move on. When you have finished these rows or your shoulder height is as tall as you want, you will leave a long tail for seaming. We will be sewing the top of this to the back panel when it's finished. So usually I recommend twice the length of the area you want to sew down. So that will give you plenty to sew with. For each size, the armhole height should be at least six inches for extra small. And this is counting from the divide row. Seven inches for small, seven and a half medium, eight large, 8 extra large, 
2x and 3x 9 and 4 and 5x 10. Now you can make yours taller or longer, but it needs to at least be those minimum measurements. Okay, on to the back panel. This is for all sizes with the right side up, which is how we were working the front panel, which is our row one, our row three, our odd number rows. We are going to join the yarn with a slip stitch to the first marked back panel stitch. Right here, it's shown in a blue stitch marker. For extra small, that's stitch number 27, 31 for small, 35 medium, 37, large, 41 extra large, 45 2x, 47 3x, 51 4x, and 53 5x. You can remove that stitch marker once you get your yarn on there. We'll begin with our chain three. Here I'm doing my alternative with my slip knot as well. Okay, then we are going to skip the next stitch and work two double crochets in the following stitch. And we're going to follow that repeat. Skip one, place two in the next across. Remember you should be working into the second double crochet of the set to continue the stitch pattern. Going to work until you reach the stitch marker on the other side over here in pink. Okay, I've worked across my back panel here. So your last set of two double crochets will be in the stitch right before the stitch marker. And your last double crochet of the back panel will go in the same stitch as the stitch marker. Then you can remove it and turn. Remember the stitch marker stitch counts as part of the back panel. It starts with the first stitch marker and ends with the second one. Extra small will have 52 back panel stitches, small 60, medium 68, large 72, extra large 80, 2x 88, 3x 92, 4x 100, 5x 104 stitches. Okay, we are turned and ready to start row two for the back panel with our chain three. Then skip the next stitch and work two double crochets in the following. Remember, we continue to work our two double crochets in the second double crochet of the set. We'll repeat that across until we have one stitch left. Then we'll double crochet in that last stitch. Okay, I'm towards the end here. I have three stitches left in row two back panel. So I skip one, place two double crochets in the next, and then in the last stitch, just place one double crochet, and that completes row two. Back panel is just a repeat of row two for the length. Extra small will work 12 rows total, including the two we just worked. Small, 14 rows medium 15, large and extra large 16 rows, 2 and 3x will work 18 rows, and 4 and 5x will work 20 rows total. After your back panel is the same length as your front panel, so if you added any rows or, or took any off, make sure that those are the same height. You'll cut your yarn. Again, you can leave a long tail for seaming so that we can seam the front shoulder to the back panel. Okay, I've completed my back panel here. My back panel is the same height as the first front panel I worked. So again, just make sure you're, you have the same number of rows. Right there, that's going to be our armhole where we join our sleeve. So at any time, you can lengthen that by adding more rows to the top of your front panel or your back panel if you feel like you need more. Okay, to get started on our left front panel, with the right side up, we're going to join the yarn with a slip stitch to the first stitch to the left of the back panel. We'll start row one with our chain three in that stitch.
then skip the next stitch, place two double crochets in the following stitch, and we'll repeat that across until we have three stitches left. As with our other panels, make sure you are working two double crochets into the second stitch of the set. When there are three stitches left, you'll place one double crochet in each of those three stitches and then turn your work. You'll have 26 stitches for extra small, 30 stitches small, 34 medium, 36 large, 40 extra large, 44 2x, 46 3x, 50 4x, and 52 stitches for 5x. For row 2, we will start with our chain 3. Then place one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Then begin our stitch pattern. Skip one, place two in the second double crochet, and repeat that across until you have one stitch left. Okay, we're at the end of our row here. We have one stitch left, so we'll place a double crochet in that, and then turn our work. Okay, for row three on the front panel, we start with our chain three. Then we will skip the next stitch and work two double crochets in the following. Then we'll repeat that across until we have three stitches left. I'll place three double crochets in those last three stitches of row three and then turn. Okay, we're getting ready to do row four, which if you remember from our right front panel, this is our decrease row. So we'll start with our chain three and our double crochet in the next two stitches. Then we'll skip one stitch and place only one double crochet in the next stitch. And then repeat that again. Skip one, place only one double crochet. Now we'll continue this part in our normal stitch pattern. Skip one, place two double crochet in the next stitch, and repeat that until we only have one stitch left. Then we'll double crochet in that last stitch and turn. Remember row four decreases your stitch count by two. It will be the same as row four from the first front panel. Okay, here I'm at the end of row four, so I have one more repeat of two double crochets, and then I place one double crochet in the very last stitch and turn. Okay, so for row five, we start with our chain three. And we're going to skip the next stitch and place two double crochets in the following stitch. And we'll repeat that stitch pattern across until we have three stitches left. Each of those three stitches will only get one double crochet each. Okay, I've worked over to the end of row five, so I have one more two double crochet repeat here to do. And then I'll have three stitches left. And in each of those three stitches, we get one double crochet. And just as with our first front panel, everyone will repeat rows four and five, decreasing on rows four, doing regular rows on row five for rows six to 11. And then each size will continue the repeats of rows two and three, which is your regular no decrease rows in order to get your shoulder height Make sure that your both front panels and your back panel are the same height. Again, our split here is our armhole, so it is a good idea to make sure it's deep enough for you that you um, can fit your arm through there comfortably, that it's similar to what you normally wear. Okay, once your back panel, both front panels are finished, we are ready to seam it up. 
So when I fold the front panels in like this, you can see my V's match up there in the middle and the tops need to be seamed to the back. Those are my armholes where I will, after we seam the shoulders to the top there, where we will insert our sleeves and join those up there. Okay, we are going to take time to seam our shoulders right now and that way you can try it on and make sure you're happy with your v-neck and your armholes and make any adjustments that you would like according to how it is fitting now before we move on to sleeves. So the first thing we need to do is turn our cardigan wrong side out. We have been working on the right side so you are likely looking at the right side and need to turn it inside out. The odd number rows, rows 1, 3, 5 are the right side just turn those towards the inside and then match up your shoulder to your back panel. Thread your yarn needle and we're ready to sew. We're lining up stitch for stitch here and in the first stitch I'm going to go through it twice to kind of lock it in. So then I bring it back around and go back into the same stitch. Gives me a little bit of a lock. Now we're going to match up stitch for stitch here and they are facing different directions so your little V that you see at the top won't line up. They will be going opposite. That lets you know you're doing it correctly. And just match up the stitches, go under both loops and pull that tail all the way through sewing the front shoulder to the back. Again, just make sure you are on the wrong side of your sweater so that when you are finished the seam we're creating will be on the inside when we turn it back to the right side. When I get to the end I go back in to do a locking stitch just like I started with and then you can weave away your ends. I'd wait to do that until you have seen the other side and tried it on just to be sure. Turn it around and you can see that the big bulky seam that we're sewing is on the inside and you can't see it. And it will flatten out nicely. You won't notice it. And then repeat that with the other shoulder. Okay, now we're moving on to making our sleeves. This is for all sizes. We're going to make two sleeves. For the sleeves, we are going to join and turn each round. This will be working in the round, but we'll be turning like we did when we worked in rows, so our stitch pattern stays the same. And we are working the sleeves from the wrist up, so this makes it really easy for you to try on to make sure it's fitting nicely and to adjust the length if you need it. We'll increase from the wrist up to your upper arm me measurement by adding increases on either side of our joining seam. So it'll be on the underside where you won't be able to see it. For extra small to through 3x, the sleeves are written for 18 and a half inches long and for 4 and 5x they're 19 inches long. If you need to adjust these you can add more or take away from your regular rounds at the end before we seam. If you want to plan ahead, you can put on your cardigan that we have so far with the shoulder seamed and see where that shoulder falls on you, the edge there, and measure down from where that ends down to where you want your sleeves to end. Um, and then that way you can add or subtract rounds as you need for that. Or if you wanted to make a short sleeve or three quarter length or whatnot. So these are just standard long sleeves. Okay, to get started we are going to do foundation double crochets again of 32 for all sizes. Or you can chain 34 and double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook and in each chain across. You'll have 32 stitches. I will just be doing a small swatch here so it'll look like a baby sleeve, but you'll do at least 32. If you need to add more or less, you can do a stitch count that is a multiple of two. So just keep it even, 32, 34, 36, 28. 
Then we'll join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch. Right here at the bottom of my foundation double crochet, I have my tail, and I'll just use that to join the bottom when I weave in my ends. And turn, just like you do when working rows. Now our first stitch is to the right here, so we'll be working into that stitch for the first chain three or chain three alternative like I'm doing. Then double crochet in each stitch around. The hard part about working in the round is that sometimes it's hard to see the last and first stitch if you've worked into it. Okay, you can check your stitch count if you're not sure. Slip stitch to the first stitch and then turn your work. And now we're going to work one more round of double crochets. We start in that stitch to the right there with our chain three or alternative and then double crochet in each stitch around. We're on the last stitch in the round here, and then we're going to join to the top of this stitch. Then we will turn our work, and now we're going to start our stitch pattern. We have three rounds of double crochet. We'll start again. This part is extra important here because you need to be working into the second double crochet of the set, just like in the rows. So make sure you start in the right spot at the beginning, which is kind of behind the, the slip stitch join because of the turn. Okay, we're going to start with our chain three. I'm using my alternative here, and then I'm going to double crochet in the same stitch. Then we'll skip the next stitch and place two double crochets in the following stitch. And then we'll just repeat that around. Okay, we're at the end here. We're going to skip the last stitch and slip stitch to the first double crochet chain three we made. Turn our work. And now you can see we've started our stitch pattern. Start with our chain three alternative. Make sure we're in the second double crochet of that set to the right of our slip stitch. And then in that same stitch, we'll place our second double crochet. And then we'll skip the next stitch and double crochet two times in the following stitch. And we'll just keep repeating that around. Skip one, place two. Okay, at the end of our round, we'll have two double crochets in one stitch, and then we will skip the last stitch, slip stitch to the first. Okay, for the next three rounds, rounds five, six, and seven, you are going to do the same thing. We'll turn, start with our chain three, double crochet in the same stitch, skip the next stitch, place two double crochets in the following stitch, and just repeat that around. You skip the last stitch and join. After you've worked regular rounds for rounds five, six, and seven, we'll do our first increase round for round eight. Okay, for round eight, our increase round will start the same way with a chain three, and a double crochet in the same stitch. Now we're going to place two double crochets in the next two stitches. So we'll work in the first stitch two times, and then we'll work in the very next stitch two times, two double crochets again. So we'll have three sets of two double crochet all in a row there. Now we're going to work our regular stitch pattern around the sleeve. Skip one, place two double crochets. Skip one, place two double crochets until you have one stitch left. When we have one stitch left for our increase round, round eight, we will place two double crochets in that last stitch. So here's our last stitch of the round. We're going to work into it to increase. Round eight will increase your stitch count by four, so we'll have 36 stitches after round eight. 
Okay, from here we're going to repeat regular rounds for rounds five, six, and seven, and then do an increase round for round eight. And we'll repeat those four rounds until your sleeve is as wide as you need it. So by each size, extra small, we'll do rounds nine through 12. We'll repeat rounds five through eight until you have 40 stitches and your sleeve is six inches wide when laid flat. For small, rounds 9 through 16, repeat rounds 5 through 8 until you have 44 stitches and your sleeve is 6.75 inches wide when laid flat. Medium, rounds 9 to 20, repeat rounds 5 to 8 until you have 48 stitches and your sleeve is 7.5 inches wide flat. Large, rounds 9 to 24, repeat rounds 5 through 8 until you have 52 stitches and your sleeve is 5, 8 inches wide flat. Extra large, rounds 9 to 24, repeat rounds 5 to 8 until you have 52 stitches and your sleeve is 8 inches wide flat. 2x, rounds 9 to 28, repeat rounds 5 to 8 until you have 56 stitches and your sleeve is 8.5 inches wide flat. 3x, in rounds 9 to 32, repeat rounds 5 to 8 until you have 60 stitches and your sleeve is 9 inches wide flat. 4x rounds 9 to 36, repeat rounds 5 to 8 until you have 64 stitches and your sleeve is 9.75 inches wide flat. 5x rounds 9 to 36, repeat rounds 5 through 8 until you have 64 stitches and sleeve is 9.75 inches wide flat. Okay, once you have reached the desired width for your sleeve, you will need to add some more length to get it longer. To lengthen our sleeves, we will use round four, which is just a regular round that starts with a chain three, double crochet in the same stitch, skip the next stitch, two double crochet in the next, repeat that around until you have one stitch left, skip the last stitch, and slip stitch to, slip stitch to the first stitch to join. Extra small, we'll, re, we'll repeat round four for rounds 13 to 35. For size small, round 17 to 35, repeat round four, Medium, repeat round four for rounds 21 to 35. Large, repeat round four for 25 to 35. Extra large, repeat round four for 25 to 35. 2x, repeat round four for 29 to 35. 3x, repeat round four if you need more length. You should have already reached your length. 4x also has reached the length, so if you need more length, you can repeat round 4. And 5x has reached length, so you can add more repeats of round 4 if needed. Okay, once your sleeve is done, you can cut your yarn and leave a long tail for seaming it to the armhole. I am going to show you here how to weave in the end and join that foundation row at the bottom there with the tail. Remember to make a second sleeve. Just go under those two loops, top two loops of the first foundation double crochet, and then back down into the top of the last one. Put my tiny tail here. Maybe leave a longer tail than I did. Pull that through, but not too tightly. You want it to look like an additional stitch. I'm using the invisible stitch technique here. And then I'm just going to weave this tail in nice and securely, which means I go back and forth, up and down, and all around as many times as possible. Okay, when you have two sleeves made, it is time to seam them to the armholes that we left. With the cardigan body wrong side out, so you should be able to see the, the shoulder seam that you made. We're going to use the sleeve right side out and slide it into the armhole. You want the wide end and not the wrist end we started with, the last row you made to go through the armhole there. And make sure that the seam where we joined and turned and increased is at the bottom of the sleeve like will run under your elbow. <clears throat> so the way I have it folded flat here, the seam is on the um, bottom edge of that fold, not the top edge, which would run across the top of my shoulder. So then we're just lining up the armhole end of the sleeve with the armhole opening here. Okay, so this is the right side I'm looking at inside the sweater. 
and the outside, when I fold the front panel over, is the wrong side. I can see my seam on the top of the shoulder. Just put your armhole end into the armhole opening and match them up. Now we're adjoining stitches to rows here, so they won't fit as nicely together as the top of the shoulders, but it's still pretty simple to do. There may be a little bit of stretching needed for the sleeve. That is okay. A little bit of stretching is okay, like you just saw me do. If it needs a lot more stretching, then you need to adjust something. Add some more increases to your sleeve, or maybe sew up the armhole if it's too wide, too deep for you. But either way, make sure it fits your body or your preference first. Okay, so we have our sleeve. I'm sorry, our seam at the bottom, and it is matching up with the side of our cardigan, the, the fold there. And that's pretty much where I'm going to start seaming. Okay, so right here is the tail where I joined to do our front panel divide. So I want to be aware of that area because I already have yarn joined and it can stretch, and I will need to weave in that tail. So I'm going to join my armhole there and make sure that I get that area secure and don't add too much bulk at the same time. So that means I'm going to go in before that join spot. When I sew, I try to grab two under two loops if possible when I'm working into the side of like the double crochet row like we are here and just sew under it in the same way that I sewed under the two stitches. Now we're just doing it the same way. We're using our long tail we left, our yarn needle, and we're just weaving back and forth, attaching those together. And I just keep going around, putting stitch to the side of the double crochet is a little bit more work to see where to put it. But once you figure it out, once you get practiced with where in the side of each row you do it, you just keep doing that. And it gets a little bit easier as you work. Now I'm pretty comfortable just maintaining the sleeve to the armhole without pinning it together, but you see I have to stretch it just a little. If you're uncomfortable with that and you're afraid that you're going to have it off, just pin it in four places. So where you start and then at the top, pin that stitch to the top of the shoulder and then on either side, like a clock, you would do it at 12, 6, 3, and 9 so that you have an equal amount distributed. To get to the shoulder seam, I don't do anything special. We just keep going around. I do try to avoid going into the loop of yarn that I use to sew the shoulders together, which can be hard to find. So it's kind of just going over it and making sure you're in the side of double crochets and, and nothing you can't actually identify. Okay, when you get back down to the bottom, the underside of your armhole, you are done. I just try to make sure that that piece is seamed together neatly. You don't want it to be too bulky, but it also does withstand a lot of stress. Just want to make sure that it's secure. And then you can weave away your ends. Again, I would wait till you're all the way finished putting both sleeves on and try it on. Okay, once both sleeves are on, we're ready for finishing. So we're going to turn your cardigan all the way right side out and join your yarn with a slip stitch to the bottom corner of the front right panel. Again, when we're wearing it, so it's going to be this one on my left here. And then we'll chain one and single crochet evenly up the front panel, continue along the back panel and down the left front panel, and then we'll cut our yarn. Unless you want to continue down around the bottom, I did not because I started with the foundation double crochet, which leaves a nice edge, but you may want to add a single crochet round there as well. Then we'll move on to finishing our sleeves and we're going to join with a slip stitch 
to the sleeve cuff on the underside and then chain one, single crochet around that, slip stitch to the first stitch, cut the yarn and weave in all those ends, repeat it on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook with a new ball of yarn here and then I will join it to the bottom right panel with a slip knot and start with my single crochet finishing round. We're single crocheting into the sides of our double crochet rows again, so it can be a little tricky, but the chain three alternative is actually a bit easier to work into, I think, and than a regular chain three. But uh, again, just try to work in under two loops of yarn on the side there. And once you get uh, rhythm, you'll see exactly where to place the single crochets. Usually it is two single crochets per row of double crochet. You just want to make sure it's not pulling or curving in too much like a hat. That means you don't have enough. And if it's getting really waffle, waffly, <laughs> ruffly or wavy, that means that you have too many. So every, you know, 10 stitches or so, just stop and have a look at it. Make sure it's laying flat how you would like it to look and you'll be good. Even along the v-neck shaping, there's nothing we need to do differently than keep a single crocheting into the sides of the rows. And as we approach the shoulder seam here, we're just going to use the same idea as with the armhole seaming. Try not to make a specific stitch into the seam itself and you'll be fine. If you really needed to, you could single crochet two together, like right before and after the shoulder seam. But usually you just make sure that you don't accidentally work into the sewn loops. So really look for the side of a double crochet. And then along the back, you're going to be working into the actual stitches because it'll be the top of the back panel. So you can see here, I have a loop that's really getting pulled a lot there. So you could do like a single crochet two together before and after like so, which is not my favorite. Or just really go further into the row and make sure you're not pulling on that one loop more. So that's what I'm going to do is go further down and make sure I add my single crochet around that entire stitch. These seams get a lot of the pressure of the you know weight of the garment so you want to make sure they're reinforced and not we're not adding to their pressure by adding more stitches into just one loop that pulls a lot. Okay, I'll just keep so single crocheting around the back, down the other side there, keeping in mind the same things with the seams and the side of the stitches until I get to the bottom edge. The bottom corner here is where I cut the yarn and was finished, but you could turn and work along that bottom one more time until you get all the way back around and cut yours there. Moving on to our sleeves, we'll start the same way. Join with the slip knot. I like to join around the seam just before, just after. Chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. Join with the slip stitch and finish up with that invisible join so that you have a nice cuff. Weave in all those ends and block your cardigan and you are done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love it if you stop by the pattern on my blog, KristaCodesign.com. Leave me a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks.